Chapter 8 Estates and Interests Introduction Objectives In this chapter, we will discuss the types of real property ownership. At the end of this chapter, you will be able to 1. Identify and explain property rights. 2. Describe the difference between real property and personal property and identify uses of real property. 3. Define the different types of freehold and leasehold estates. 4. Explain different forms of ownership. 5. Describe ways businesses can own real estate and discuss condominium and cooperative ownership. Key Terms There are a number of important terms in this chapter. Remember to pay particular attention to these terms when you see them. Act of Waste Partition Air Rights Personal Property Beneficiary Real Estate Real Property Bundle of Rights Remainder Interests Remainderman Chattel Reversionary Interest Curtsy Dower Right of Survivorship Esquite Riparian Rights Estate for Years Severalty Fee Simple Estate Special Purpose Real Estate Fixture Trade Fixture Tenancy in Common Homestead Subsurface Rights Illiquidity Tenancy by the Entirety Joint Tenancy Trustee Truster Joint Venture Undivided Interest Life Estate Unities of Interest Possession Time and Title Literal Rights Parcel the New York Bureau of Educational Standards requires that you spend 150 minutes studying the material in this chapter. Your course timer can be found in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Real Estate A simple definition of real estate is that it is air, water, land, and everything affixed to the land. When someone owns a parcel of real estate, he or she also has a set of legal rights that are attached to the ownership of that parcel. These rights have value and can be sold. In general, when a buyer purchases real estate, he or she is buying the rights that were held by the previous owner, the seller. These rights, known as the bundle of rights, have both tangible and intangible components. The tangible components are fairly obvious. They include such things as the land, the improvements, the fixtures, the trees and the plants. The intangible rights that are part of the bundle include the rights to sell, lease, encumber, use, Enjoy. Exclude. Devise by will. Occupy. Cultivate. Explore. License. Dedicate. Give away. Share. Mortgage. Trade. Exchange land. The word land applies to more than just the Earth's surface. It includes minerals beneath the Earth's surface, water on or below the Earth's surface, the air above the surface. In addition, land includes all plants attached to the ground or in the ground, such as trees and grass. A parcel, or tract, of land is a section of land defined by boundaries. Characteristics of land Land has three unique physical characteristics. Land is immobile or permanent. A parcel of land cannot be moved from one place to another. One can transport portions of the land, such as mine coal, dirt, or cut plants. However, as soon as the coal or plants are removed from the land, they are no longer considered land. Land is indestructible in the sense that one would have to remove a segment of the planet all the way to the core in order to destroy it. Even then, the portion extending upward to infinity would remain. For the same reason, land is considered to be permanent. Land is not homogeneous or unique. No two parcels are exactly the same. Even if two adjacent parcels are very similar and have the same economic value, they are different in that each parcel has a unique location. Real Estate Real estate is not only made up of land, but also all of the man-made structures that are permanently attached to the land. Real estate would then include, in addition to land, such things as fences, streets, buildings, wells, sewers, utilities, sidewalks and piers. Such man-made structures attached to the land are called improvements. The phrase permanently attached refers primarily to the intention of the person who attached the item. For example, if a person builds a house with the intention of creating a permanent dwelling, the house is considered real estate. However, if a camper fastens a tent to the land with the intention of moving it to another camp in a week, the tent would not be considered real estate. On the previous screen, we said that land included what exists at below or above the Earth's surface. 
We can now define real estate as the physical land at the Earth's surface, extending downward to the center of the Earth and upward into space, plus all the items permanently attached to that land by nature or humans. Property. Property is something that someone owns. When a person buys a piece of furniture, he or she owns the furniture, so the furniture is considered property. Along with ownership comes a set of rights to enjoy that item of property. The furniture owner has the right to possess and use the furniture. Among other things, he or she can sell it, rent it, donate it, will it, mortgage it or prevent others from using it. This is the same bundle of rights we talked about earlier. Property classifications. We can classify property as either real property, the ownership of real estate and the bundle of rights associated with owning the real estate. Personal property, the ownership of anything which is not real estate, along with the rights associated with owning the personal property item. Unlike real property, personal property is readily movable from one location to another. Personal property is sometimes referred to as chattels or personality. This word evolved from the word cattle, one of man's earliest important possessions. Chattels real are annexed to real estate, whereas chattels personal are movable. Chattels are transferred by means of a bill of sale. The Uniform Commercial Code regulates the transfer of chattels and the use of chattels as security for debts. Tangible versus intangible. We can also categorize real and personal property as tangible or intangible property. Tangible property is physical, visible, and material, such as a home, a car, a boat or furniture. Intangible property is abstract with no physical existence, such as stocks and checking accounts. Real property rights. The definition of real property is even broader than our previous definition of real estate. Real property includes the real estate we talked about, land and all of the man-made structures that are permanently attached to the land, and it also includes the bundle of rights. Let's take a few minutes to discuss some of the real property rights in more detail. Right to use. The right to use a property refers to the right to use it in certain ways, such as mining, cultivating, landscaping and building on the property. The right is subject to the limitations of local zoning and the legality of the use. One's right to use may not infringe on the rights of others to use and enjoy their property. For example, an owner may be restricted from building a large pond on his or her property. If in fact the pond would cause flooding and drainage hazards to the next door neighbor. Real property rights. Right to transfer the right to transfer interests in the property includes the right to sell, bequeath, lease, donate, or assign ownership interests. An owner may transfer certain individual rights to the property without transferring total ownership. Also, one may transfer ownership while retaining individual interests. For example, a person may sell mineral rights without selling the right of possession. On the other hand, the owner may convey all rights to the property except the mineral rights. While all rights are transferable, the owner can only transfer what the owner in fact possesses. A property seller, for example, Cannot sell water rights if there are no water rights attached to the property. Right to encumber. The right to encumber the property essentially means the right to mortgage the property as collateral for debt. There may be restrictions to this right, such as a spouse's right to limit the degree to which a homestead may be mortgaged. Right to exclude. The right to exclude gives the property owner the legal right to keep others off the property and to prosecute trespassers. Real property rights. The bundle of real property rights also applies separately to the individual components of real estate, the air, the surface, and the subsurface. Air rights. Air rights apply to the space above the surface boundaries of the land, outlined by imaginary vertical lines that extend to infinity. In many large cities, air rights over railroads have been purchased to build large office buildings. This was the case with the MetLife building in New York City. Since the beginning of airplane flight, Air rights have been restricted to allow planes to fly over a person's property, as long as the flights do not interfere with the owner's use and enjoyment of the property. Governments and airports often purchase air rights next to an airport to allow for their glide patterns. Surface rights. Surface rights apply to the real estate contained within the surface boundaries of the parcel. This includes the ground, all natural things affixed to the ground and all improvements. Surface rights also include water rights. Real property rights. Subsurface rights. Subsurface rights apply to land beneath the surface of the real estate parcel extending from its surface boundaries downward to the center of the earth. 
The rights to remove mineral and gas deposits and subsurface water from the water table are examples of subsurface rights. A landowner could decide to sell or lease the rights to any gas or oil found in the land. Much of the farmland in southwestern New York State is subject to oil and gas leases. Given these definitions, it's possible for one parcel of property to be owned by a number of persons or entities. One person or entity could own the surface rights. One person or entity could own subsurface mineral rights. One person or entity could own subsurface gas and oil rights. One person or entity could own the air rights. Real property rights. Water rights Water rights basically concern the rights to own and use water found in lakes, streams, rivers, and the ocean. What water rights does an owner of a property that contains or adjoins a body of water have? This will depend largely on whether or not the water is moving, whether or not the water is navigable literal rights. Literal rights concern properties that border bodies of water that are not moving, such as lakes, bays, seas and oceans. Owners of properties bordering a navigable, non-moving body of water enjoy the literal right of unrestricted use, but own the land only up to the high water mark. They do not own the water or the land under the water. The water and land beneath it are public property owned by the state. However, if a body of water, such as a lake or pond, is entirely contained within the boundaries of an owner's property, he or she would own the water as well as the unrestricted right to use it. Literal rights attach to the property. That means, unlike subsurface or air rights, they cannot be sold separately or kept when the property is sold. When the property is sold, the literal rights transfer with the property to the new owner. Real Property Rights Riparian rights Riparian rights concern properties that border moving water such as streams and rivers. If a property borders a stream or river, the owner's riparian rights are determined by whether the water is navigable or not navigable. If the property borders a non-navigable stream, the owner enjoys unrestricted use of the water and owns the land beneath the stream to the stream's midpoint. If the property borders a navigable stream, the stream is considered to be a public easement. In such a case, the owner's property extends to the high water mark as opposed to the midpoint of the stream. The state owns the land beneath the water. Riparian rights to use flowing water are subject to the following conditions. The usage is reasonable and does not infringe on the riparian rights of other owners downstream. The usage does not pollute the water. The usage does not impede or alter the course of the water flow. Like literal rights, riparian rights attach to the property. Note, as we said, literal and riparian rights may not be sold separately. However, when land borders a river or stream, the owner is entitled to any increase in the land mass that results from the deposit of soil by water or wind action. These increases are called accretions. On the other hand, an owner could lose land mass due to erosion or the change in a stream's channel. Check your understanding. Print this screen, answer the questions and then advance to the next screen to see the answers. 1. What is a bundle of rights? 2. What are the three characteristics of land? 3. Define the right to use and describe its limitations. 4. What is the difference between literal rights and riparian rights? Check your understanding. Answers 1. What is a bundle of rights? A set of legal rights that are attached to the ownership of a parcel of property. 2. What are the three characteristics of land? Immobile or permanent indestructible non-homogeneous or unique. 3. Define the right to use and describe its limitations. The right to use a property refers to the right to use it in certain ways, such as mining, cultivating, landscaping and building on the property. The right is subject to the limitations of local zoning and the legality of the use. One's right to use may not infringe on the rights of others to use and enjoy their property. 4. What is the difference between literal rights and riparian rights? Literal rights concern properties that border bodies of water that are not moving. Riparian rights concern properties that border moving water such as streams and rivers. Real versus personal property. When conveying real property, confusion can arise when determining the difference between personal property and the real property that will be transferred. This confusion can happen because some items of property could be either personal property or real property, depending on circumstances. The main factor for distinguishing real from personal property is whether the item is permanently attached to the land or to structures attached to the land. However, 
It is possible to change an item of real property to personal property. For example, a tree growing in the front yard is an item of real property. However, when the owner cuts the tree down, it becomes personal property. By the same token, it is possible to convert an item of personal property to real property. For example, a swimming pool pump on a shelf in the owner's garage is personal property. When it is installed with the rest of the pool, it becomes real property. While the attachment criterion is a main factor in distinguishing between real and personal property, there are other things to look at. In addition, there can be exceptions to the attachment rule. Fixtures. A personal property item that has been permanently attached to land or building is called a fixture and it becomes part of the real estate. Typical examples are toilets, water pumps, septic tanks and window shutters. The owner of real property essentially owns all fixtures belonging to the real property. When the owner sells the property, the buyer gets the rights to all fixtures. Note, fixtures not included in the sale must be listed and excluded in the sale contract. Legal tests of a fixture. If there is some doubt as to whether an item is a fixture or removable personal property, a court may determine the status using one or several tests. Method of Annexation Adaptability Intention Existence of an Agreement Method of Annexation How the item is attached to the building can be a determining factor. A central air conditioner would be a fixture, while a window air conditioner might be considered personal property. However, if the window unit is important to the building's operation, it might be judged to be a fixture. Adaptability. If an item is uniquely adapted to the property, or the property is custom designed for an item, it may be considered real property whether the item is easily removable or not. House keys, a garbage compactor and a removable door screen are examples. Custom-made draperies can also fall into this category. Fixtures. Intention. A person's original intention can take priority when determining whether an item is a fixture or not. If someone attached an item to real property with the intention of removing it after a period of time, the item may be judged to be personal property. Conversely, if a person intended an item to be a fixture, even though the item is easily removable, it may be considered a fixture. For example, if an owner installs his grandmother's antique ceiling fan with the intention of removing it when he sells the home, the fan would be considered personal property. Existence of an agreement. An owner may specify which items will be included as fixtures and which items will remain personal property. A common example is the stipulation by an owner that all of the appliances, including the washer and dryer, are fixtures that will sell with the property, but the refrigerator is personal property and will not be part of the sale. As you can see by the above descriptions, when negotiating a contract for the sale of real estate, it is critical that the sellers and buyers clearly state in writing what stays with the property that is being sold. Other items of property. Trade fixtures Trade fixtures, or chattel fixtures, are items of a tenant's personal property that the tenant has temporarily attached to a landlord's real property in order to conduct business. Trade fixtures may be detached and removed before the lease is up or at the time the tenant vacates the property. If the tenant fails to remove a trade fixture, it may become the property of the landlord through accession. From that point on, the fixture is considered real property. Examples of trade fixtures include a grocer's food freezers, a merchant's clothes racks, a tavern owner's bar, a dairy's milking machines and a printer's printing press. Implements. Growing plants, including agricultural crops, may be the real property or personal property. Plants and crops that grow naturally without requiring anyone's labor or machinery are considered real property. Plants and crops that need human involvement and labor are called implements. Even though they are attached to the ground, implements are considered personal property. If an implement is owned by a tenant farmer, the tenant has the right to the harvested crop whether the lease is active or expired. If the tenant grew the crop, it is his or her personal property, and the landlord cannot take it. Types and uses of real property Several kinds of property exist in the real estate market. Residential property is defined as land or improved property with buildings designed for humans to live in, such as single-family homes, multi-family homes, apartments, vacation homes or condominiums. Industrial property is land used for industrial purposes, such as warehouses, factories, distribution centers and power plants. Commercial property refers to income-producing property, such as office buildings, restaurants, 
shopping centers, hotels and motels, parking lots and stores. Some industrial properties may also fall into this category. Agricultural property is defined as land used primarily for growing crops or raising livestock, such as farms, pasture land, orchards and timberland. Zoning ordinances are usually favorable for agriculture use. Special purpose real estate is property that does not fall into one of the above categories. It has a unique use to the persons who own and use it, such as churches, hospitals, schools and government buildings. Other types of property that fall into the special use category include public open space, usually owned by private persons or the government and includes undeveloped shorelines, public parks and lakes. Recreational areas, such as parks, water access areas, trails and shorelines. These are usually preserved for ecological or educational reasons. In New York, these areas are supervised by the local government, the Department of Environmental Conservation, and or the Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation. Characteristics of real property Real property has both economic and physical characteristics. Physical characteristics. If you recall, on an earlier screen we talked about the physical characteristics of land. These same characteristics apply to real property. To review, the three physical characteristics are Immobility, the property itself cannot be moved from one place to another, even though some elements on the property can be removed, such as soil, and the topography of the land can be changed. Indestructibility, the property is permanent and the structures attached to it are usually for the long term. However, those improvements to the property can depreciate and become obsolete, which could substantially reduce the property's value. Uniqueness no two pieces of property are ever exactly the same. Although they may be similar, each has its own location. Also, each parcel of property has unique characteristics, even if the differences are very small. Characteristics of real property Economic characteristics. There are five economic characteristics that affect the value of real property in the marketplace. Improvements. Adding structures and improvements to the land add to its value and use. The improvements can also add value to the surrounding property and neighborhood. For example, the construction of a shopping center or the selection of a site for a toxic waste dump could have a dramatic effect on the property in the neighboring community. Location I'm sure you're familiar with the popular saying that the three most important characteristics of a property are location, location, location. This characteristic, also known as area preference or situs, refers to the preference of one area over another based on any number of factors. These factors include history, reputation, convenience and beauty, as well as the geography. Location has a significant effect on value. For example, a railroad track runs through the center of a large town, virtually dividing it in half. The homes on the north side of the track sell for $200,000, while identical homes on the south side of the track sell for upwards of $250,000. The only difference is the perception on the part of the community that the south side is a better neighborhood. Characteristics of real property The other economic characteristics are Supply and demand Supply refers to the amount of a product or service that is available in the market for use or purchase. Demand refers to how much of that product or service buyers actually want. There is a principle that says that the price of a product will vary directly with demand and inversely with supply. What that means is when the supply is low, the price will be high. However, when the supply is high, if there is little demand, the price will be low. Scarcity, whether we realize it or not, land is a scarce commodity in a world that is three-fourths water. The supply of land is not endless. Even though there are areas that are undeveloped and or uninhabited, the amount of land in a given location that is available for use is considered fixed. Permanence of investment. Constructing improvements on real property requires a large investment of capital and labor. Even when a building is demolished to make way for a new structure, the sewers, drainage, electric and water remain in place. The return on such investments is usually stable. Investors usually invest for the long term, since real estate suffers from illiquidity, meaning that it is not quickly or easily converted to cash, as short-term investments in stocks are. Interests. An interest in real estate is ownership of any combination of the bundle of rights to real property, including the rights to possess, use, transfer, encumber and exclude. Undivided interest. 
An undivided interest is an owner's interest in a property in which two or more parties share ownership. The terms undivided and indivisible signify that the owner's interest is in a fractional part of the entire state, not in a physical portion of the real property itself. If two co-owners have an undivided equal interest, one owner may not claim the northern half of the property for his or her exclusive use. Examples of interests include an owner who enjoys the complete bundle of rights, a tenant who temporarily enjoys the right to use and exclude, a lender who enjoys the right to encumber the property over the life of a mortgage loan, a repairman who encumbers the property when the owner fails to pay for services, a buyer who prevents an owner from selling the property to another party under the terms of the sale contract. A mining company which temporarily owns the right to extract minerals from the property's subsurface. A local municipality which has the right to control how an owner uses the property. A utility company which claims access to the property through an easement. Interests. Interests differ according to how long a person may enjoy the interest. What portion of the land, air, or subsurface the interest applies to. Whether the interest is public or private. Whether the interest includes legal ownership of the property interests are principally distinguished by whether they include possession. If the interest holder enjoys the right of possession, the party is considered to have an estate in land. If a private interest holder does not have the right to possess, the interest is an encumbrance. If the interest holder is not private, such as a government entity, and does not have the right to possess, the interest is some form of public interest. An encumbrance enables a non-owning party to restrict the owner's bundle of rights. Tax liens, mortgages, easements, and encroachments are examples. We'll talk more about encumbrances, encroachments and easements in the next chapter. Public entities may own or lease real estate, in which case they enjoy an estate in land. However, government entities also have non-possessory interests in real estate which act to control land use for the public good within the entity's jurisdiction. The prime example of public interest is police power, or the right of the local or county government to zone. Another example of public interest is the right to acquire ownership through the power of eminent domain. Check your understanding. Print this screen, answer the questions and then advance to the next screen to see the answers. 1. What are the legal tests that determine if an item is a fixture? 2. Define special purpose real estate and give an example. 3. What five economic characteristics affect the value of land in the marketplace? 4. What is an undivided interest? Check your understanding. Answers 1. What are the legal tests that determine if an item is a fixture? Method of annexation adaptability. Intention. Existence of an agreement to. Define special purpose real estate and give an example. Property that has a unique use to the persons who own and use it, such as churches, hospitals, schools and government buildings. 3. What five economic characteristics affect the value of land in the marketplace? Improvements. Location. Supply and demand scarcity. Permanence of investment for. What is an undivided interest? An undivided interest is an owner's interest in a property in which two or more parties share ownership. The owner's interest is in a fractional part of the entire state, not in a physical portion of the real property itself. Estates in land. An estate in land is an interest that includes the right of possession. Depending on the length of time a person may enjoy the right to possess the estate, the relationships of the parties owning the estate, and specific interests held in the estate, an estate is a freehold or a leasehold estate. Freehold estate means, I own the property. It is what we think of as ownership. There is no definite ending date. The estate lasts at least a lifetime, because the property can be willed to a person's heirs. Types of freehold estates. Fee simple, including fee simple absolute, fee simple defeasible, fee simple on condition and qualified fee simple. Life estate. Leasehold estate means, I rent the property. It is what we think of as renting or leasing. There is usually a definite ending date. Sometimes, these are referred to as less than freehold estates or non-freehold estates. Types of leasehold estates. Estates for years. Periodic estate. Estate at will. Estate at sufferance. We will discuss leasehold estates in more detail later in this course. Both leasehold and freehold estates are referred to as tenancies. The owner of the freehold estate is the freehold tenant, and the renter, 
or lessee, is the leasehold tenant. Fee Simple Estates The Fee Simple Estate is the highest form of ownership interest one can acquire in real estate. It includes the complete bundle of rights and the tenancy is unlimited. The Fee Simple Interest is also called the Fee Interest, or simply the Fee. The owner of the Fee Simple Interest is called the Fee Tenant. The Fee Simple Absolute Estate is a perpetual estate that is not conditioned by stipulated or restricted uses. It may also be freely passed on to heirs. For these reasons, the Fee Simple Absolute Estate is the most desirable estate that can be obtained in residential real estate. It is also the most common. The bundle of rights attached to the Fee Simple Absolute Estate includes Right of Quiet Enjoyment Right to Give Away Right to Sell by Deed Right to Will Right to exclude. Right to control with what's allowed by law. A fee simple owner may also do any of the following. Pass a life estate in reversion or remainder to another person. Use the property as security for a debt. Grant an easement. Allow another person to lease the property. Give permission for another to conduct an activity on the property. Fee simple estates, like all estates, remain subject to government restrictions and private interests. Fee Simple Estates As we said, Fee Simple Absolute is the most complete and highest form of ownership. However, some deeds create what starts out as a Fee Simple but attach some sort of condition or limitation. These are called Fee Simple Defeasible Estates. In Defeasible Estates, ownership can continue indefinitely, provided the use of the property conforms to certain stated conditions. The essential characteristics of Fee Simple Defeasible Estates are the property must be used for a certain purpose or under certain conditions. If the use changes or if prohibited conditions are present, the estate reverts to the previous grantor of the estate. There are two types of defeasible estates. Qualified Fee Simple Fee Simple on Condition Qualified Fee Simple In a Qualified Fee Simple estate, the deed specifies that the property must be used for a specific purpose. For example, the deed may read that Mrs. Becker gives a 20-acre parcel of land to the Mayfair Foundation as long as it is used for educational purposes. The key words here are as long as. If at some point the Mayfair Foundation builds a retail space on the property, the title would terminate automatically and would revert to Mrs. Becker or her heirs. Fee Simple Estates Fee Simple on Condition Like a Qualified Fee Simple A Fee Simple on Condition allows an infinite term, provided the condition is met. The key words in the deed would be but if. Using our example from the previous screen, Mrs. Becker could have the deed worded so as to state that she is transferring ownership of 20 acres to the Mayfair Foundation, but if the foundation ever uses the property for anything other than educational purposes, their ownership will terminate. This language creates a fee simple on condition. Mrs. Becker gives title to the acreage to the foundation with the condition that it is never used for any non-educational purpose. The title continues indefinitely. However, if at some point the foundation does not comply with the condition, Mrs. Becker or her heirs can retake possession of the property or go to court to get possession back. Fee simple on condition differs from qualified fee simple in that the reversion of the estate back to the original grantor is not automatic. Life estates. A life estate is a freehold estate that is limited in duration to the life of the owner or other named person. Upon the death of the owner or other named individual, the estate passes to the original owner or another named party. The holder of a life estate is called the life tenant. The life tenant does not have the right to pass ownership to his or her heirs. The distinguishing characteristics of the life estate are The owner enjoys full ownership rights during the estate period. Holders of the future interest own either a reversionary or a remainder interest. The estate may be created by agreement between private parties, or it may be created by law under prescribed circumstances. Remainder If a life estate names a third party to receive title to the property upon the death of the life tenant, the party enjoys a future interest called a remainder interest or a remainder estate. For example, Mr. Jones leaves his home to his second wife with the provision that, after her death, it will pass to his daughter Sarah from his first marriage. So. During Mrs. Jones' lifetime, Sarah owns a remainder interest and is called a remainderman. Reversion. If no remainder estate is established, the estate reverts to the original owner or the owner's heirs. For example, Mr. Smith gives his home to his ill cousin Jim with the stipulation that when Jim dies, the home will revert to Mr. Smith or his heirs.
In this situation, Mr. Smith owns a reversionary interest. Life estates. The two types of life estates are the conventional and the legal life estate. A conventional life estate is created by grant from a fee simple property owner to the grantee, the life tenant. Following the termination of the estate, rights pass to a remainderman or revert to the previous owner. During the life estate period, the owner enjoys all ownership rights, provided he or she does not infringe on the rights of the remainder or reversion interest holders, such as by damaging the property or jeopardizing its value. If such actions occur, holders of the future interest may take legal action against the property owners. The two types of conventional life estate are the ordinary and the per order vi life estate. Ordinary life estate. An ordinary life estate ends with the death of the life estate owner and may pass back to the original owners or their heirs or to a named third party. For example, John King grants a life estate in a property to Mary Brown, to endure over Mary's lifetime. John establishes that when Mary dies, the property will revert to himself. Per outer vi. A per outer vi life estate endures over the lifetime of a third person, after which the property passes from the tenant holder to the original grantor or a third party. For example, Yvonne grants a life estate to Ryan, to endure over the lifetime of Yvonne's husband Steve. Upon Steve's death, Yvonne establishes that her mother, Rose, will receive the property. Life Estates A legal life estate is created by state law as opposed to being created by a property owner's agreement. The focus of a legal life estate is defining and protecting the property rights of surviving family members upon the death of the husband or wife. Two forms of legal life estate are the homestead and dower and courtesy. Homestead. A homestead is one's principal residence. Homestead laws protect family members against losing their homes to general creditors attempting to collect on debts. New York does not recognize a homestead estate. Dower and courtesy. Dower is a wife's life estate interest in the husband's property. When the husband dies, the wife can make a claim to portions of the decedent's property. Courtesy is the identical right enjoyed by the husband in a deceased wife's property. Property acquired under dower laws is owned by the surviving spouse for the duration of his or her lifetime. New York no longer recognizes dower and courtesy. Life tenant responsibilities. Life tenancy constitutes true ownership of the property for the owner's life. That means that the life tenant can use and enjoy the property, lease it, and receive any income and profits that the property generates. In theory, a life tenant could mortgage the property or even give it away, but title would always end at the time of the life tenant's death, no matter who was in possession of the property at that time. But a life tenant has the responsibility to protect the property for the remainderman or the reversionary interest. He or she may not do injury to the property in any way. If the life tenant damages or misuses the property, it is known as an act of waste. Some examples of acts of waste would include Using the property for something other than was intended. Causing a fire that destroys the home. Neglecting to pay property taxes. Conducting activities that would decrease the value of the property. Forms of ownership. There are numerous ways of holding ownership of a freehold estate according to how many parties share the ownership and how they share it. The property may be held. In severalty, held by only one owner. In co-ownership held by two or more people. In trust, held by a third party for the benefit of someone else. It is very important for a licensee to know how a property is held. First of all, when selling a property, the broker must know who will be required to sign all the documents to make the transaction legal, including the listing agreement, the purchase offers, the sales contract and the deed. Secondly, the buyers must inform the broker as to how they wish to take the title which they may need to discuss with an attorney. Estate in severalty If a single party owns the fee or life estate, the ownership is an estate in severalty. Synonyms are sole ownership and tenancy in severalty. This type of ownership severs or separates from any form of co-ownership. When the sole owner is a husband or wife, the property is separate property. The owning spouse holds the title separately from his or her spouse. The estate of a deceased tenant in severalty passes to heirs by probate. Forms of co-ownership. Co-ownership means that a parcel is owned by two or more persons or organizations. Co-owners are called co-tenants. In New York there are three types of co-ownership that are recognized. Tenancy in common. Joint tenancy. Tenancy by the entirety. 
Tenancy in common The tenancy in common, also known as the estate in common, is the most common form of co-ownership when the owners are not married. The defining characteristics are two or more owners, identical rights, interests individually owned, electable ownership shares, no survivorship, no unity of time, two or more owners, any number of people may be co-tenants in a single property, identical rights, co-tenants share an indivisible interest in the estate, that is, all have equal rights to possess and use the property subject to the rights of the other co-tenants. No co-tenant may claim to own any physical portion of the property exclusively. They share what is called undivided possession or unity of possession. Tenancy in common. Interests individually owned. All tenants in common have distinct and separable ownership of their respective interests. Co-tenants may sell, encumber, or transfer their interests without hindrance or consent from the other owners. Electable ownership shares. Tenants in common determine among themselves what share of the estate each party will own. For example, three co-tenants may own 40%, 35%, and 25% interests in a property, respectively. In the absence of stated ownership shares, it is assumed that each has a share equal to that of the others. No survivorship, a deceased co-tenant's estate passes by probate to the decedent's heirs and devisees rather than to the other tenants in common. Any number of heirs can share in the ownership of the will tenancy. No unity of time. It is not necessary for tenants in common to acquire their interests at the same time. A new co-tenant may enter into a pre-existing tenancy in common. Note, in New York if a property is sold or given to people who are not married to one another, the sale or gift automatically creates a tenancy in common unless the deed stipulates otherwise. Also, if more than one person inherits a parcel of property, they own it as tenants in common unless it is specified differently in the will. Joint Tenancy in a joint tenancy, two or more persons collectively own a property as if they were a single person. Rights and interests are indivisible and equal. Each has a shared interest in the whole property which cannot be divided up. Joint tenants may only convey their interests to outside parties as tenant and common interests. One cannot convey a joint tenant interest. The defining characteristics and requirements of joint tenancy are Unity of ownership Equal ownership Transfer of interest. Survivorship unity of ownership, whereas tenants in common hold separate title to their individual interests, joint tenants together hold a single title to the property. Equal ownership, joint tenants own equal shares in the property, without exception. If there are four co-tenants, each owns 25% of the property. If there are 10 co-tenants, each owns 10%. Joint tenancy. Transfer of interest. A joint tenant may transfer his or her interest in the property to an outside party, but only as a tenancy in common interest. Whoever acquires the interest co-owns the property as a tenant in common with the other joint tenants. The remaining joint tenants continue to own an undivided interest in the property, less than new co-tenants share. Survivorship In New York, joint tenants enjoy rights of survivorship. That means if a joint tenant dies, all interests and rights pass to the surviving joint tenants free from any claims of creditors or heirs. When only one joint tenant survives, the survivor's interest becomes an estate in severalty, and the joint tenancy is terminated. The estate will then be probated upon the severalty owner's death. The survivorship feature of joint tenancy presents an advantage to tenancy in common, in that interests pass without probate proceedings. On the other hand, Joint tenants relinquish any ability to will their interest to parties outside of the tenancy. Creation of joint tenancy. To create a joint tenancy, all owners must acquire the property at the same time, use the same deed, acquire equal interests, and share in equal rights of possession. These are referred to as the four unities. Unity of time, all parties must acquire the joint interest at the same time. Unity of title, all parties must acquire the property in the same deed of conveyance. Unity of interest, all parties must receive equal undivided interests. Unity of possession, all parties must receive the same rights of possession. For example, if Bill, Jim, Sam and Paul purchase a property as joint tenants, each one will receive his deed at the same time, will own 25% interest in the property and will have the right to use any part of the property. According to the rights of survivorship we discussed on the previous screen, if Bill dies first, his share will pass to Jim, Sam and Paul, 
who will all then own 33% of the property. If Jim dies next, his share will pass to Sam and Paul, who will now each own 50% of the property. If Sam dies next, his share will pass to Paul, who now owns the entire parcel. Paul can now will the property to his heirs. Termination of joint tenancies Joint tenants have the right to sell or give away their interests in the property. However, when one of the joint tenants exercises this right, the new owner is not a joint tenant with the other owners. The new owner becomes a tenant in common. In this situation, the remaining joint tenants would inherit from each other, but the tenant in common remains a tenant in common. For example, Gina, Sue and Mary own a parcel of property as joint tenants. Gina sells her 33% interest to Mona. Mona is now a tenant in common. If Sue dies, Mary would inherit Sue's interest and own 66% of the property. Mona would inherit none of Sue's interest. If on the other hand, Mona dies while Sue and Mary are still alive, Mona's heirs would inherit her interest. Termination by Partition Suit A partition suit can terminate a joint tenancy or a tenancy in common. Foreclosure and bankruptcy can also terminate these estates. A partition suit is a legal way for an owner to dispose of his or her interest against the wishes of other co-owners. The suit petitions the court to divide, or partition, the property physically, according to the owner's respective rights and interests. If this can't be done, the court may order the property sold and the proceeds divided among the co-owners. Tenancy by the entirety. Tenancy by the entirety is a form of ownership reserved exclusively for husband and wife. It features survivorship, equal interests, and limited exposure to foreclosure. Survivorship, on the death of legal spouses, the decedent's interest passes automatically to the other spouse. Equal, and divided interest, each spouse owns the estate as if there were only one owner. Fractional interests cannot be transferred to outside parties. The entire interest may be conveyed but only with the consent and signatures of both parties. No foreclosure for individual debts, the estate is subject to foreclosure only for jointly incurred debts. Termination, the estate may be terminated by divorce, death, mutual agreement, and judgments for joint debt. In New York, the transfer of property to a married couple is automatically a tenancy by entirety unless the deed says otherwise. If a couple divorces, the tenancy by entirety dissolves and the individuals become tenants in common. Community property rights. Some states have established a community property form of ownership. This type of ownership defines property rights of legal spouses before, during, and after their marriage, as well as after the death of either spouse. Community property law distinguishes real and personal property into categories of separate and community property. Separate property belongs to one spouse. Community property belongs to both spouses equally. Separate property consists of property owned by either spouse at the time of the marriage, property acquired by either spouse through inheritance or gift during the marriage, property acquired with separate property funds, income from separate property. Community property consists of all other property earned or acquired by either party during the marriage. A spouse owns separate property free and clear of claims by the other spouse. He or she can transfer it without the other spouse's signature. Upon the death of the separate property owner, the property passes to heirs by will or laws of descent. Community property cannot be transferred or encumbered without the signatures of both spouses. Upon the death of either spouse, half of the deceased's community property passes to the surviving spouse, and the other half passes to the decedent's heirs. Community property rights do not exist in New York. Check your understanding. Print this screen. Answer the questions and then advance to the next screen to see the answers. 1. What is the highest form of ownership interest one can acquire in real estate and why? 2. What are the essential characteristics of fee-simple defeasible estates? 3. How is a life estate different from a fee-simple estate? 4. What are the three main forms of ownership? Check your understanding. Answers 1. What is the highest form of ownership interest one can acquire in real estate and why? Fee simple estate. It includes the complete bundle of rights and the tenancy is unlimited. 2. What are the essential characteristics of fee simple defeasible estates? The property must be used for a certain purpose or under certain conditions. If the use changes or if prohibited conditions are present, the estate reverts to the previous grantor of the estate. 3. How is a life estate different from a fee simple estate? 
a life estate is limited in duration to the life of the owner or other named person. When the life tenant dies, the estate passes to the original owner or another named party. The life tenant does not have the right to pass ownership to his or her heirs. 4. What are the three main forms of ownership? In severalty, held by only one owner. In co-ownership, held by two or more people. In trust, held by a third party for the benefit of someone else. Trusts. In an estate and trust, a fee owner, the grantor or truster, transfers legal title to a fiduciary, the trustee, who holds and manages the estate for the benefit of another party, the beneficiary. The trust may be created by a deed, will, or trust agreement. The trustee has fiduciary duties to the truster and the beneficiary to maintain the condition and value of the property. The specific responsibilities and authorities are set forth in the trust agreement. Living Trust A living trust allows the truster, during his or her lifetime, to convey title to a trustee for the benefit of a third party. The truster charges the trustee with all necessary responsibilities for managing the property, protecting its value, and securing whatever income it may produce. The trustee may also be ordered to sell the property at a given point. The beneficiary receives all income and sales proceeds, minus the trustee's fees. Land Trust A land trust allows the truster to convey the fee estate to the trustee and to name himself or herself the beneficiary. The land trust applies only to real property, not to personal property. The agreement, or deed and trust, grants the beneficiary the rights to possess and use the property and to exercise control over the actions of the trustee. Ownership by business organizations Businesses are organized in a variety of ways. Businesses can purchase, hold and sell property in much the same way as a private individual can. Businesses can be organized as sole proprietorship, partnership, joint venture, corporation, limited liability company, Syndicate. Real estate investment trust. Let's look at each of these more closely. Sole proprietorship. In a sole proprietorship, one person owns the whole business and reports all the profits and losses on his or her personal income tax return. This type of business is easy to organize and operate. Many real estate brokers choose this type of business structure. The business owner can use his or her own name or a fictitious name that he or she registers as state law requires. There are certain tax advantages to being incorporated that are not available to sole proprietors. So, it is becoming increasingly common for sole proprietors to incorporate to avail themselves of these benefits, such as pension plans and profit-sharing plans. Partnerships When two or more people become associated to carry on a business for profit, they make up a partnership. An agreement to share in the profits of a business creates a presumption that a partnership exists. Partners in a partnership may have varying degrees of interest in a partnership property, and interests can be bought and sold by members leaving the partnership or new partners. For this reason, real estate ownership by a partnership is tenancy in common. A general partner is an active partner in the partnership who has unlimited personal liability for the debts of the partnership. If a new general partner joins an existing partnership, he or she would have unlimited liability for future debt to the partnership but his or her liability for the existing partnership debts would be limited to the extent of his or her investment of capital. Under the Uniform Partnership Act of 1994, general partners have equal rights to use partnership property for partnership purposes, cannot transfer their interests to another without the consent of the other partners. Creditors of the partnership have first claim on the assets of the partnership. Partnership assets cannot be attached or executed to satisfy the private debts of the partners. However, bankruptcy of a partner would dissolve the partnership as it applies to the bankrupt partner, and the creditors would be able to get to the bankrupt partner's share of the partnership assets. Partnerships. Limited partnerships are partnerships in which the limited partners have limited liability as opposed to the unlimited liability of a general partnership. Limited partners are liable only to the extent of their investment. However, a limited partnership must have at least one general partner who has unlimited liability. Here are some important points about limited partnerships. The partnership agreement must be in writing, and the partnership must file a formal certificate of limited partnership. A limited partner cannot permit his or her name to be used in a way that would signify that he or she is a general partner. According to the 1983 Revised Limited Partnership Act, Partners may contribute services to the partnership. 
In the past, a limited partner could contribute only money to the partnership. Any limited partner may ask for an accounting from a general partner. Limited partners have the authority to get rid of the general partner for cause. Note, the Tax Reform Act of 1986 eliminated many of the tax advantages for limited partnerships in real estate investment. For example, any tax losses from investments in limited partnerships are subject to the passive activity limitation rules. These tax changes led to a significant decline in the real estate syndicate's use of the limited partnership form of ownership. However, many real estate limited partnerships still exist. Partnerships. Joint ventures are partnerships for a single undertaking rather than a continuing business. Because the joint venture is set up for a limited purpose, the implied authority of the members is more limited than in general partnerships. A joint venture can take on a number of different partnership forms. The most common is the limited partnership. As is the case with all partnerships, there must be at least one general partner and any number of limited partners. Generally, in real estate, limited partners are the investors that provide most of the equity capital, while general partners are usually responsible for managing the partnership assets and they may contribute a relatively small amount of the required capital. Limited partners are generally very restricted in the management of a joint venture. A member of a joint venture partnership does not necessarily have the power to bind the other joint venture partners. Since a joint venture is considered a partnership, it is taxed in the same way as a partnership. That is, the individual joint venture members are responsible for paying the taxes. Joint venture members also have the joint and several liability of partners with regard to third parties. However, unlike a partnership, one joint venture member can sue the joint venture. Also, while the death of a partner in a partnership automatically terminates the partnership, the death of a joint venture member does not necessarily dissolve the joint venture. A managing partner typically has control of the joint venture. Corporations. A corporation is a separate legal entity established under state law by the filing of articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State. Because a corporation is a legal person, real estate ownership by a corporation is an ownership in severalty. Here are some key things to know about corporations. Corporations can own property in the corporate name. Shareholders of a corporation have limited liability and do not participate directly in managing the corporation. Shareholders elect a board of directors, who are the ones responsible for setting corporate policy. The directors hire corporate officers, who operate the corporation. The corporate bylaws, which are the rules of the corporation, lay out the power of the corporate officers. Because a corporation is a separate legal entity, shareholders can sue the corporation. Because a corporation is a legal entity, it has an unlimited life and theoretically exists forever. If the corporation wants to sell all or a majority of its corporate assets, the majority of the stockholders must approve the sale. If a corporation exists in name only, in other words, individual funds are commingled with corporate funds, the courts can decide that the corporation is actually a partnership or sole proprietorship. If this happens, the corporation will lose its limited liability protection. If just a few people hold all the stock in a corporation so they can actively control the business, the corporation is said to be closely held. Closely held corporations can avoid considerable corporate taxation by not showing a profit. They do this through salaries, benefits, and bonuses to the officers, who are also the stockholders. Limited Liability Company A limited liability company is a hybrid business entity having characteristics of both a corporation and a partnership. Limited liability companies provide the limited liability protection of corporations without the regulations associated with corporations. It is a more flexible structure in that the owners have limited liability for the actions and debts of the company, and it is suitable for smaller companies with a single owner. The primary corporate characteristic is limited liability. The primary partnership characteristic is the availability of pass-through income taxation. Some important facts about LLCs include. All LLCs must have at least one member. LLC members are the owners of the LLC much as shareholders are the owners of a corporation or the partners of a partnership. Like shareholders, a member's liability to repay the LLC's obligations is limited to his or her capital contribution. Members may be persons, corporations, partnerships, or other LLCs. A member's ownership interest in the LLC is called a membership interest. 
Membership interests are often called shares. In most cases, a member's right to control or manage the LLC is proportionate to his or her membership interest. LLCs are managed by their members in proportion to their membership interests. Many LLC operating agreements, however, provide for a manager or board of managers to run the day-to-day -day operations of the LLC. All LLCs must file evidence of their existence with the Secretary of State of the state where they choose to be organized. Every LLC must disclose its company name, appoint a statutory agent and disclose its valid business purpose. The operating agreement of an LLC is a document most important to its success because it determines, defines, and apportions the rights of the members. Syndicates. The term syndication is not a legal term. It is a descriptive term for a group of two or more people who combine their financial resources to achieve certain investment objectives. A syndicate is able to acquire real estate that could not be purchased by an individual alone. A typical real estate syndicate combines the money of individual investors with the management of sponsor. The syndication has three cycles. Organization, planning, purchasing property, meeting registration and disclosure rules, and marketing. Operation. Managing both the syndicate and the real property, usually done by the sponsor. Liquidation, reselling the property. A syndicate is governed by whatever form of business organization the participants adopt. This could be a limited partnership, general partnership, corporation, real estate investment trust, because most syndicates intend to make a profit for many people from the efforts of a few people. They must comply with the rules and regulations of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Syndicates are typically used in cases of multiple, continuing projects that require the investment of substantial amounts of money from many sources. Condominium Ownership A condominium is a hybrid form of ownership of multi-unit residential or commercial properties. It combines ownership of a fee simple interest in the airspace within a unit with ownership of an undivided share, as a tenant in common, of the entire property's common elements, such as lobbies, swimming pools, and hallways. A condominium unit is one airspace unit together with the associated interest in the common elements. The condominium unit can be owned jointly, in severalty, in trust, or in any other manner allowed by state law. Unit owners hold an exclusive interest in their individual apartments, and co-own common elements with other unit owners as tenants in common. Possession, use, and exclusion Unit owners exclusively possess their apartment spaces but must share common areas with other owners. The property's legal documents may create exceptions. For example, unit owners may be required to join and pay fees for use of a health club. Transfer and encumbrance Condominium units can be individually sold, mortgaged, or otherwise encumbered without interference from other unit owners. As a distinct entity, the condominium unit may also be foreclosed and liquidated. An owner may not sell interests in the apartment separately from the interest in the common elements. Resale of a unit interest may entail limitations, such as the condominium association's prior approval of a buyer. Condominium units are individually assessed and taxed. The assessment pertains to the value of the exclusive interest in the apartment as well as the unit's pro rata share of common elements. In New York, condominium properties are usually managed by an association of owners or a board of managers the owners elect. The owners may manage themselves or hire a property manager. Owners pay monthly maintenance fees. Cooperative ownership. In a cooperative, or co-op, the person owns shares in a non-profit corporation or cooperative association, which in turn acquires and owns an apartment building as its principal asset. Along with its stock, the shareholder acquires a proprietary lease to occupy one of the apartment units. The number of shares purchased reflects the value of the apartment unit in relation to the property's total value. The ratio of the unit's value to total value also establishes what portions of the property's expenses the owner must pay. Cooperative associations interest the corporate entity of the cooperative association is the only party in the cooperative with a real property interest. The association's interest is an undivided interest in the entire property. There is no ownership interest in individual units, as with a condominium. Shareholders interest. In owning stock and a lease, a co-op unit owner's interest is personal property that is subject to control by the corporation. Unlike condominium ownership. The co-op owner owns neither a unit nor an undivided interest in the common elements.
Cooperative ownership. Proprietary lease The co-op lease is called a proprietary lease because the tenant is an owner of the corporation that owns the property. The lease has no stated or fixed rent. Instead, the proprietor tenant is responsible for the unit's pro rata share of the corporation's expenses in supporting the cooperative. Unit owners pay monthly assessments. The proprietary lease has no stated term and remains in effect over the owner's period of ownership. When the unit is sold, the lease is assigned to the new owner. Expense liability. The failure of individual shareholders to pay monthly expense assessments can destroy the investment of all the other co-op owners if the co-op cannot pay the bills by other means. Since the corporation owns an undivided interest in the property, debts and financial obligations apply to the property as a whole, not to individual units. If the corporation fails to meet its obligations, creditors and mortgagees may foreclose on the entire property. A completed foreclosure would terminate the shareholder's proprietary lease and bankrupt the owning corporation. Compare this situation with that of a condominium, in which an individual's failure to pay endangers only that individual's unit, not the entire property. Transfers. The co-op interest is transferred by assigning both the stock certificates and lease to the buyer. Other method of title transfer skeet is a common law doctrine that operates to ensure that property is not left in limbo and without an owner. It originally referred to a number of situations where legal interest in land was destroyed by operation of law, so that the ownership of the land reverted to the immediately superior feudal lord. Today the term is applied to the transfer of the title to a person's property to the state when the person dies intestate without any other person capable of taking the property as heir. For example, a common law jurisdiction's law might state that when someone dies without a will and is not survived by a spouse, descendants, Parents, grandparents, descendants of parents, children or grandchildren of grandparents, or great-grandchildren of grandparents, then the person's estate will escape to the state. In some jurisdictions, escape can also occur when an entity holds money or property and the property goes unclaimed. In many jurisdictions, if the owner cannot be located, such property can be escaped to the government. Check your understanding. Print this screen. Answer the questions and then advance to the next screen to see the answers. 1. In a limited partnership, what is the liability difference between a general partner and a limited partner? 2. List four key things about corporations. 3. What business forms can syndication take? 4. What form of ownership is a condominium? Check your understanding. Answers 1. In a limited partnership. What is the liability difference between a general partner and a limited partner? Limited partners are liable only to the extent of their investment. General partners have unlimited liability. 2. List four key things about corporations. Corporations can own property in the corporate name. Shareholders of a corporation have limited liability and do not participate directly in managing the corporation. Shareholders elect directors, who are the ones responsible for setting corporate policy. The directors hire corporate officers, who operate the corporation. 3. What business forms can syndication take? Limited partnership. General partnership corporation. Real estate investment trust for. What form of ownership is a condominium? A condominium is a hybrid form of ownership which combines ownership of a fee simple interest in the airspace within a unit with ownership of an undivided share, as a tenant in common, of the entire property's common elements. Summary Review This concludes Chapter 8. Below is a summary which you can review before taking your quiz. When someone owns a parcel of real estate, he or she also has a set of legal rights, known as the bundle of rights, which are attached to the ownership of that parcel. These rights have value and can be sold. They include minerals beneath the Earth's surface, water on or below the Earth's surface and the air above the surface. Real estate is not only made up of land but also all of the man-made structures that are permanently attached to the land. Real property is a real estate and the bundle of rights associated with owning the real estate. The bundle of real property rights also applies separately to the individual components of real estate, the air, the surface, and the subsurface. Because of this, it's possible for one parcel of property to be owned by a number of persons or entities. One person or entity could own the surface rights. One person or entity could own subsurface mineral rights. One person or entity could own subsurface gas and oil rights. One person or entity could own the air rights. 
Summary Review Summary ownership also includes the rights to use any water on or adjacent to a property. Literal rights concern properties that border bodies of water that are not moving, such as lakes, bays, seas and oceans. Owners of properties bordering a navigable, non-moving body of water enjoy the literal right of unrestricted use but own the land only up to the high water mark. Riparian rights concern properties that border moving water such as streams and rivers. If the property borders a non-navigable stream, the owner enjoys unrestricted use of the water and owns the land beneath the stream to the stream's midpoint. If the property borders a navigable stream, the stream is considered to be a public easement and the owner's property extends only to the high water mark. Any property which is not real estate is personal property. Personal property is sometimes referred to as chattels or personality. A personal property item that has been permanently attached to land or building is called a fixture and it becomes part of the real estate. Trade fixtures are items of a tenant's personal property that the tenant has temporarily attached to a landlord's real property in order to conduct business. Real property can be classified according to its use as residential, industrial, commercial, agricultural and special purpose. Summary Review Summary An estate in land is an interest that includes the right of possession. A freehold estate has no definite ending date. The estate lasts at least a lifetime, because the property can be willed to a person's heirs. By contrast, a leasehold estate has a definite ending date. It involves landlords and tenants. The fee simple estate is the highest form of ownership interest one can acquire in real estate. The fee simple absolute estate is a perpetual estate that is not conditioned by stipulated or restricted uses. It may also be freely passed on to heirs. Fee simple defeasible estates have conditions attached to them. The property must be used for a certain purpose or under certain conditions and if the use changes or if prohibited conditions are present, the estate reverts to the previous grantor of the estate. There are two types of defeasible estates, qualified fee simple and fee simple on condition. A life estate is a freehold estate that is limited in duration to the life of the owner or other named person. Upon the death of the owner or other named individual, the estate passes to the original owner or another named party. The distinguishing characteristics of the life estate are The owner enjoys full ownership rights during the estate period. Holders of the future interest own either a reversionary or a remainder interest. The estate may be created by agreement between private parties or it may be created by law under prescribed circumstances. Summary Review Summary If a single party owns the fee or life estate, the ownership is an estate in severalty. Tenancy in common is the most common form of co-ownership when the owners are not married. Co-tenants share an indivisible interest in the estate. All tenants in common have distinct and separable ownership of their respective interests. Co-tenants may sell, encumber, or transfer their interests without hindrance or consent from the other owners. Tenants in common determine among themselves what share of the estate each party will own. A deceased co-tenant's estate passes by probate to the decedent's heirs and devisees rather than to the other tenants in common. In a joint tenancy, two or more persons collectively own a property as if they were a single person. Rights and interests are indivisible and equal. Each has a shared interest in the whole property which cannot be divided up. Joint tenants may only convey their interests to outside parties as tenant in common interests. One cannot convey a joint tenant interest. If a joint tenant dies, all interests and rights pass to the surviving joint tenants free from any claims of creditors or heirs. Tenancy by the entirety is a form of ownership reserved exclusively for husband and wife. It features survivorship, equal interests, and limited exposure to foreclosure. In New York, the transfer of property to a married couple is automatically a tenancy by entirety unless the deed says otherwise. If a couple divorces, the tenancy by entirety dissolves and the individuals become tenants in common. Summary Review Summary businesses can purchase, hold and sell property in much the same way as a private individual can. Businesses can be organized as a sole proprietorship, partnership, joint venture, corporation, limited liability company, syndicate, Real Estate Investment Trust A condominium is a hybrid form of ownership of multi-unit residential or commercial properties. It combines ownership of a fee simple interest in the airspace within a unit with ownership of an undivided share, as a tenant in common, of the entire property's common elements, such as lobbies, swimming pools, 
and hallways. A condominium unit is one airspace unit together with the associated interest in the common elements. The condominium unit can be owned jointly, in severalty, in trust, or in any other manner allowed by state law. Unit owners hold an exclusive interest in their individual apartments and co-own common elements with other unit owners as tenants in common. In a cooperative, or co-op, the person owns shares in a non-profit corporation or cooperative association, which in turn acquires and owns an apartment building as its principal asset. Along with its stock, the shareholder acquires a proprietary lease to occupy one of the apartment units. The number of shares purchased reflects the value of the apartment unit in relation to the property's total value. The ratio of the unit's value to total value also establishes what portions of the property's expenses the owner must pay. Click here if you would like to open this summary as a PDF, which you can then print or save to your device. Chapter 8 Summary Chapter Conclusion In this chapter, we have discussed Difference between real property and personal property Uses of real property Different types of freehold estates Different types of leasehold estates Different forms of ownership Ways that businesses can own real estate in the next chapter we'll talk about liens and easements. But first, your chapter quiz. Good luck! 1 of 24 which of the following is included in the bundle of rights inherent in ownership? To transfer. 2 of 24 tenancy and severalty is the same as sole ownership. 3 of 24 which type of suit would not terminate a tenancy in common? Withholding. 4 of 24 which of the following best describes personal property? is readily movable from one location to another 5 of 24 which of the following is the best definition of real estate? Land and everything permanently attached to it 6 of 24 literal rights include land ownership up to the high water mark. 7 of 24 which of the following would be Chattel's personal? Pets. 8 of 24 which of the following is not a characteristic of land? It is destructible. 9 of 24 3 people have identical rights but unequal shares in a property share an indivisible interest, and may sell or transfer their interest without consent of the others. What type of ownership is this? Tenancy in common. 10 of 24 tenancy in common allows for any number of people to be co-tenants in a single property. 11 of 24 what type of organization provides the liability advantages of a corporation, without the regulations corporations must deal with? LLC. 12 of 24 unlike tenants in common, which statement is true about joint tenants? They cannot will their interest to a party outside the tenancy. 13 of 24 navigable waterways are considered to be public easement. 14 of 24 which type of estate is the highest form of ownership? Fee simple estate. 15 of 24 when is a plant considered personal property? When it requires human involvement 16 of 24 what type of estate is a perpetual estate that is not conditioned by stipulated or restricted uses? Fee simple absolute. 17 of 24 which ownership right allows for the donation of property? To transfer. 18 of 24 Mary and sister Jill jointly hold a parcel of land. The property is held in. Co-ownership. 19 of 24 which of the following is an intangible component within the bundle of rights attached to land ownership? Encumber. 20 of 24 if the real estate interest holder enjoys the right of possession, the party is considered to have a state in land. 21 of 24 what part of a non-navigable waterway does the owner of an abutting property own? To the middle of the waterway. 22 of 24 what determines a landowner's water rights? Movement of the water. 23 of 24 which of the following is not an economic characteristic of real property? Liquidity. 24 of 24 the right to encumber property means the right to mortgage the property as collateral for debt.